Hi everyone, this is Mr. Seacrest, in case you haven't met me before and don't know who I am. So in this video, I'm going to be telling you about your next two online learning assignments, assignments four and five. So for these assignments, you'll be completing the Factors Affecting Solution Formation Lab. This will be one of the last activities in the Road Deicer unit. So in this Road Deicer unit, we've been trying to answer the question, how do road deicers affect the environment? And to do that, you've learned about ionic compounds because road deicers like sodium chloride and magnesium chloride are ionic compounds. And so you've learned about the charges of ions, the formulas and names of ionic compounds, and whether or not they'll dissolve in water. And that last bit's really important because in order to melt ice, ionic compounds have to be able to dissolve in water. So in this lab, we're going to look at that more, look at three factors that affect how quickly ionic compounds dissolve in water. So these factors are very important for road deicers because the faster ionic compound dissolves, the sooner it can start making ice melt, and the earlier we'll be able to safely drive on roads again. So we want road deicers to dissolve as quickly as possible, and in this lab we're going to learn how to make that happen. In this lab, you'll look at three factors or variables that affect how quickly a solute dissolves in water. The first variable you'll test is stirring. Stirring a solution mixes the solute and solvent together, and we're going to see how that mixing affects the rate at which the solute dissolves. We can look at what happens when, the, when we stir the solution at different speeds, and what happens when we don't stir the solution at all. The second variable you'll look at is temperature. Aqueous solutions can be at any temperature between boiling and freezing. So we wanna see if changing the temperature of water affects how quickly a solute will dissolve. The third variable you'll examine is crystal size. Ionic compounds exist as small pieces or crystals. These crystals can be different sizes. For example, table salt has smaller and finer crystals, while ice cream salt has much larger and coarser crystals. We wanna see how this size difference affects the rate of solution formation. You will be conducting an experiment at home to examine one of these three variables. So you'll start by choosing one of the variables either stirring, temperature, or crystal size. So this is going to be your independent variable. You will be changing this variable deliberately throughout the experiment. That means the other two variables, whichever two you don't choose, are going to be your control variables. So you'll try to keep them the same through each of your trials of your experiment or your tests. So once you choose your independent variable, which of these three you're going to change, then you need to choose a solute to use. And so you can either use table salt, table sugar, lemonade or Kool-Aid powder, or something else that you can find around your house. It just has to be a crystal. And so we need crystals. If we don't have crystals, then it's not like an ionic compound. It's not like a road deicer. So choose your independent variable, choose the crystals that you're going to use, and then you're going to conduct an experiment to see how your chosen variable affects the rate at which a compound dissolves in water. So the rate at which a compound dissolves in water is our dependent variable. So when you change the independent variable, you're watching to see how the dependent variable changes. And so to conduct your experiment, you'll be making a hypothesis, writing a procedure, making a data table, carrying out the procedure, and writing observations in your data table. All of that is outlined on the doc for the lab. And then after you carry out your procedure, and then you're going to watch videos for the other two variables, for the two control variables. So I already conducted the experiment for all three variables. And so once you do yours with your independent variable, then you can watch my videos to see what happens with the other two variables. And then after you've looked at all three variables, whether on your own or through videos, then you'll draw some conclusions by answering the analysis questions. So now that you have a better idea of what we're doing in this lab, you can open up your doc, Choose your variable and solute and get started.